Hi everybody, thanks for joining us for this episode of the GovCon video blog. Today's installment is the second part of our series on export controls. In part one, we mentioned that ITAR and EAR restrict the export of controlled items without prior approval or a license. So for the rest of our vlog series, we're going to frame our discussions around the four parts of this statement. Restrictions, exports, controlled items, and licensing requirements. For the next few vlogs, we're going to focus on ITAR, starting with controlled items. So today we're going to discuss four things that contractors should know about controlled items under ITAR. So one thing that contractors should know is that the controlled items under ITAR typically fall into one of three general categories, defense articles, defense services, and technical data. Now we're using the term controlled item to refer to those things that ITAR restricts the export of. So when ITAR mentions restrictions on exports or penalties for export or licensing requirements for exports, the discussion is nearly always with respect to either a defense article, a defense service, or technical data. And one thing to always keep in mind is that all three of these controlled item categories trace back to things that are on the U.S. munitions list. Now we talked about defense articles and technical data in our first vlog. A defense article is an item or technical data that's listed on the U.S. munitions list. And technical data is information that's required for the design, development, production, manufacture, operation, maintenance, or repair of a defense article. Again, something that's on the U.S. munitions list. And this is a very broad category. It includes plans, drawings, photos, or instructions. So really any information that's required to create or use a defense article. And technical data also includes software that's directly related to a defense article. But ITAR just doesn't control things. It controls activities or what are called defense services. And this leads us to the second thing that contractors should know. The second thing that contractors should know is that ITAR controls collaborations with foreign persons in the US. So we mentioned that the third controlled item that ITAR restricts is really an activity, namely providing a defense service. A defense service under ITAR means providing assistance to a foreign person in designing, developing, engineering, operating, or using a defense article, which again is an item on the US munitions list. So really providing any kind of help in creating or using a defense article may be a defense service. Now under ITAR, a defense service also means providing technical data to a foreign person. And ITAR is very clear. If you provide assistance or technical data to a foreign person anywhere on this planet, including in the US, you are performing a defense service that is therefore subject to controls under ITAR. So if a company is working on something on the US munitions list, it needs to have a good handle on the information flow with collaborators or have restrictions in place that limit access by foreign persons. The third thing the contractor should know is that defense services include providing any assistance and training. And this is really a point of emphasis, providing assistance of any kind not only on the creation of a defense article, but in the operation and use, is considered providing a defense service. And ITAR explicitly states that a defense service includes providing training. So if a company gets a call from somebody who says, I'm working on X, can you give me some help? Or I'm putting together a training or user manual on X or how to use X or I'm selling X and I need help putting together marketing materials explaining how to use X. Well, if X is related to an item on the US munitions list and the person calling is a foreign person, the company may be conducting a defense activity if it offers help. The fourth thing that contractors should know is that defense articles on the U.S. munitions list include components and parts. Now we mentioned in our first vlog that the U.S. munitions list identifies broad categories of defense articles and there are actually 21 categories of items. 
And these categories are things that we typically associate with military hardware and equipment, like firearms, guns, ammunition, uh, surface and naval vessels, aircraft, and military electronics. And within each category, ITAR lists particular defense articles that fall within each category. And the subcategories can get pretty granular in terms of the particular items that are controlled. Now, also within each category, there's at least one paragraph that explicitly refers to technical data and defense services related to the defense articles under the category. But most of the categories also include paragraphs for components, parts, accessories, and attachments that are related to one or more of the defense articles that are listed under the category. Now, as to what constitutes a part, component, attachment, or accessory, ITAR is somewhat cryptic. For example, a part is any single unassembled element of a component or accessory or attachment. And a component is defined as an item that is useful when used with an end item. And an end item is defined broadly to mean any system, equipment, or article that's ready for its intended use. So part is really anything that ends up in a defense article. So are all nuts and bolts defense articles that are controlled under ITAR? Well, no. Most, if not all, of the references to parts and components on the U.S. munitions list refer to parts and components that are either classified or parts or components that are specially designed for the particular defense article that's mentioned in the paragraph. And in 2013, changes in ITAR and EAR carved out fasteners like nuts and bolts from the things that would be considered specially designed. Still, if a company knows that something it's designing or creating is going to end up in a defense article, it should have an idea of whether that something is a part or component that's listed on the U.S. munitions list. Because if it is, it may have to take precautions on who it sells it to and who it talks about it to. So to sum up, the four things that contractors should know about controlled items under ITAR are 1. Controlled items are either defense articles, defense services, or technical data. Number 2. ITAR controls certain collaborations with foreign persons in the U.S. Number 3. Defense services include providing any assistance and training. And number 4. Defense articles on the U.S. munitions list include components and parts. Well, that wraps up our vlog. We hope you come back for our next installment in our export control series. And thanks for joining us in this episode of the GovCon video blog.